Hello, my friends. It's Ranger Russ from the Megs Point Nature Center coming to you today for the second time from Charlie's Island. Now, before we get started, I want to let everybody know we do have a YouTube channel. We don't have a lot of subscribers and we're really looking for more subscribers to our YouTube channel. So if you know anybody that's on YouTube, please let them know. Please subscribe to the Megs Point Nature Center YouTube channel. We need a thousand subscribers in order to start doing YouTube live programs as well as our Facebook live that we're doing daily. Not every day, but Tuesday through Friday at 11 o'clock, our Facebook live programs. You can also see the programs. If you're not watching live, you can go and see the programs on our website, megspointnaturecenter.org. Visit the Virtual Learning Center and you'll get to see all of the programs that we've done in the past, which now we were over 200 videos. Uh, not all of them up, up on the website yet, and I don't think they're all up on YouTube yet, but they are getting there. Yesterday's video was absolutely amazing. I really encourage you to go back and look at that video because I had an encounter with a weasel. I believe it was a long, long-tailed weasel. It did have a pretty long tail. Um, and that's the reason that I came back. So I'm going to flip the camera just for a second because if you look right there, that's where I saw the weasel yesterday. So I've come back today to do a program on weasels. And hopefully our friend will show up. I uh, haven't seen him yet since I started setting up, but you never know. So let's start out. Normally when I do my favorite animal, which that's what I'm calling today is my favorite animal, I have you try and figure out what the animal is. But today's special, I'm going to tell you right up. We're talking about weasels. Now, there are two different types of weasels that we have in Connecticut. The long tail weasel and the short-tailed weasel. Short-tailed weasel is also known as an ermine. This is the track, a typical track of the forefoot, the front foot of a weasel. The back foot has a slightly different track. So it's something to keep in mind. Some animals, the tracks are very, very different. Some animals, they are very similar. The weasel is similar, uh, but there are some differences between the forefoot and the hind foot. So this is our weasel track. The weasel skull looks like this here, okay? It is not a large skull. This allows the weasel to get into some very small spaces. You can see the skull is a little under an inch. If the skull can fit through, then the weasel can fit through, then the rest of the body can fit through. And that's why they're able to get into such tiny places. You saw the weasel yesterday. It was a good size weasel, uh, but it was not as large as the long-tailed weasels get. So the difference in size between a long-tailed weasel and a short-tailed weasel, uh, the short-tailed weasel can get to be about 13 inches long. A long tail weasel gets up about 16 inches longer, a little, a little longer. Um, they say actually 16 to 22 inches. So I've never seen a 22 inch weasel. That's pushing mink size right there. Uh, but the tails are longer too. So a uh, short tail weasel, the tails are like two to six inches. Long tail re weasel, the tails are three to nine inches. And the size gets substantially different too. The, the long-tailed weasel weighs a few ounces more uh, than the short-tailed weasel. So, all right. So the short-tailed, I, I think I just switched the uh, ounces with the length of the tail. Short-tailed weasel tail gets about three and a half inches long. Long-tailed weasel tail gets three to nine inches long. So... All right, and they, they weigh, I guess that's why I got that mixed up, because they weigh about nine and a half ounces, the long tail weasel. So the length of the tail, I guess, is pretty close to the weight, but it has nothing to do with that. 
Now, all right, so that's the, that's the pelt. You can see the white belly. Uh, please go back and look at the video yesterday. That was an amazing encounter with the weasel. Uh, brown on the back, white on the belly, and a black-tipped tail. In the winter, they turn white. The short tail weasel turns white as the length of day changes. It triggers a hormone which triggers them to change color. The long tail weasel, they don't believe it has anything to do with the length of day, but if you're anywhere north of Pennsylvania, the long tail weasels turn white. If you're south, like Maryland and south, then they stay uh, brown all year. So that's pretty cool. I do have a silhouette of a weasel. The long tail and the short tail weasel, same basic silhouette. Again, the tail can be longer. A long short tailed weasel tail, a short tail weasel with a long tail is the same as a long tail weasel with a short tail. So for that reason, the DEP actually had to do DNA tests. They did a survey 2007 to 2009 uh, and the survey, actually part of the survey area was here at Hammonasset, which was very cool. I don't know that they got many weasels here in the park, uh, but they were trapping and doing DNA tests to determine whether it was a long tail or a short tail weasel. I said yesterday in the program that the short tail weasel was endangered. It's not endangered. It is much more rare in Connecticut, uh, but I don't think now that it's listed. I have to look that up though. Uh, the short tail weasels are found mostly in northern Connecticut. So we don't really get them down here on the shore. Long tail weasels much more common here on the shore. And that's why I'm pretty confident that yesterday's weasel without a DNA test was a long tail weasel. And one of the reasons was the tail was substantially more than three inches, which is about as long as a short tail weasel's tail gets. Okay, so let's take some time, see if we've got any questions. Uh, live birth, yes. How many pups? I think they get up to nine. So nine would be a, a large uh, number of pups for them. Any other questions? I love it that everybody's putting up where they're messaging from. Always like to see it. There's Marlboro. Oh, that's Sharon from Marlboro. Dan. I think Dan's day off. Dan works at the park. I think it's his day off today. Uh, let's see. Enfield visited Hamo yesterday. I think she commented that she was here yesterday. This is who I think it is. May. Um, colorful marshes. Yes, the marshes are starting to turn color here at Hammonasset. It is a beautiful time to be here. There's a bit of a wind today but it's not a cold wind. You can be out here without a jacket easily. I would say uh, most of the people I'm seeing are wearing short sleeve shirts. Now, again, Charlie's Island is off limits to the public. So uh, you can't come out here and look for the weasel yourself. And that's probably why it came out because it doesn't encounter a lot of people. Um, I do a radio uh, program on ICRV radio and today we talked about the weasels. So if you want to listen into a radio program, Nature with Ranger Russ on ICRV radio, uh, you'll hear more about the weasel at that time. Saw a fox and a coyote at a cemetery in Detroit. Any chance of seeing weasels there? Yes. So the weasels are found across North America. Um, and I'm going to reverse it. One of them is found just about everywhere except really northern Canada. And I believe that's the long tail weasel, almost all of uh, North America. And the short tail weasel is really northern North America. So the northern part of the U.S. and uh, up into Canada for the short tailed weasel. They like it colder. Should look for short tailed in Stratford and may see a mink. You definitely have a, a good likelihood for mink along the coast of Connecticut or near water. They like waters much better. Um, Timmy wants to know if they hide in the winter. So they, they do hide. They do not hibernate, but they do hide. So they will turn all white about that color. 
Now, I do have an ermine pelt, and I was not able to find it this morning because it's not in our traveling uh, bin. But the ermine white winter pelt would be all white except for the little black tip of the tail. So they will continue to hunt all winter. Now, weasels have a very high metabolism. They need to eat almost all day. That's why very often you hear of weasels when they get into a hen house, they'll kill multiple chickens, even though they can't eat that many chickens. And that's because they're killing their prey. If they have an opportunity, they're going to kill it and they're going to store it. And then they're going to come back and eat it later. So great question from Timmy. Let's see if we have any others here. Westerly, Westerly, you're going to have long-tailed minks. I doubt you'll have short-tailed minks there. Let's see if we missed any other questions here. Watching from my office in NHV. Maybe I'll have a Zoom meeting and head to Hamo. <laughs> oh, that would be cool. Judith, hello from, how's Ohio? Uh, saw a fox, so I think I'm caught up with questions at this time. And I'm gonna keep on going then. So again, they do change in the winter. I'm gonna keep an eye out because that, that weasel might show up on us. Now the mink are substantially larger than a weasel. This would be a good size. This would be a big short tail weasel or a small long tail weasel. The length of the tail, you're pushing it well over. This is over three inches, so this is gonna be a long tail weasel. Uh, the short tail weasel, the tail would probably only be about that big from, from my fingers down. That's a short tail weasel tail. Uh, this also could be a smaller long tail weasel. Oh, there's the truck delivering more uh, branches. So this could be a large short tail weasel or a shorter long tail weasel in either case. Now, one of the cool things that weasels do, they have their babies April to May, and then they're going to have their breeding season shortly after that. But the female will actually, um, it's called delayed implantation. And they will delay implanting the, the embryos until for about nine to 10 months and then they will implant, and that's why they're able to have their babies, even though breeding season is right after, uh, they're able to have their babies in the spring. So they'll breed in May to June and not have their babies until April, and that's because they have delayed imp implantation. Ah, Linda is watching, one of our volunteers. Are they protected from trapping in Connecticut? No, you can trap them in Connecticut. There is a season and there is licensing that you have to go through, but they can be trapped in Connecticut. And I believe that people prefer the winter pelt when they are a white. Now, I grew up learning that an ermine was white and a short tail weasel was brown. And later I found out that they're the same animal. They just turn color in the winter. So most of the time, though, you'll see the pelts for a, a weasel are labeled. At, when they're brown, they're labeled as a weasel. And when they're white, they're labeled as an ermine. So that adds to the idea that there are two different animals. They are actually not two different animals. So... Let's see if we have any other questions here. Plenty of water. Yep, the, the mink like water much more than the weasels do. Mink are, are swimmers. They're in the water regularly. Now let's go back to the track for a second because in other track programs, and if you go back and view the past programs, you'll learn more about this. Um, we've talked about bounding, hopping, waddling, and walking, which are four different modes of transport that animals do. And they leave a different track pattern depending on the way that they move. The weasels are bounders. So they will hop, front feet land and launch, back feet land almost on the same place and launch 
and they do that. So ba-dump, 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 ba-dump. That's how they move around. Hoppers are going to be different. Uh, they hop, their front feet land, their back feet go past where the front feet were, and leave the back foot track is in front of the front foot track. So the bounders, the tracks are on top of each other. So that's one thing to look for if you're out trying to track um, weasels. Now, I said that they're allowed to be trapped. The mink and the long-tail weasels, I know that there are seasons and they're allowed. I don't know that the short-tail weasel has a trapping season. There, they may not be enough of them to allow for a trapping season. There's Wallingford, Gia. One of my staff is watching. Gia is doing her paper probably right now on salt marshes. So uh, that's something that everybody can look forward to. She's putting a booklet together and we will be able to have a booklet of salt marshes, particularly a ham and acid, but you can use it in other salt marshes along Connecticut as well. So she says, yes, she's working on her paper. She's learning more about uh, salt marsh plants than I know. So she's going to become my expert on uh, identifying salt marsh plants if she's not already. All right. Any other questions? So is there anything else I can tell you about the, uh, the weasels? Not seeing any questions. We should. All right. Here's what we'll do. We'll flip the camera and see if we can have you guys look out for our friendly weasel. Trapping for their pelts. Yes, they, that is what they are trapped for. I don't believe that many people eat weasel meat. So I think it's just the pelt and then the carcass is not used, which is unfortunate. I prefer if uh, when you hunt an animal, you use every part of the animal. <coughs> Excuse me. So they can eat anything uh, about the size of a rabbit or smaller. That includes birds, although it's hard for them to catch uh, most of the birds in flight. Um, and they will eat fish. You know, they can, they can swim just like the mink can, even though the mink is much more uh, at, uh, at home in the water than the weasels. But they will, they will also swim. And they'll raid ne nests, too. So they'll eat birds... If the bird flies away, then they're still going to go for the... <clears throat> got a dry throat all of a sudden. They're still going to go for that nest. Actually, I want to show you something else. Since I've got the camera turned around, uh, something that I did not see yesterday because I was very distracted by our uh, neighborhood weasel... Not sure if you can see right here. These are rabbit pellets. Little round rabbit pellets are round. Um, so that is a prey item for our friendly neighborhood weasel. Who is not showing up today? I really didn't think so. I, I, it, would, it was a long shot to come out here, but it's a beautiful day. So nice to, nice to be out here. Linda says the weasel was so cute. Was it a young one? So it could be a young one. It was full size. It could have been young of April. Um, and by this time of year, it should have reached full size. So uh, could be a young one. That was what they were asking me on the radio today is what made that one so friendly? Was it just overly friendly, overly curious, uh, super brave? Uh, or just not used to people, never seen a person before. Uh, this area, again, is closed to the public, so um, they uh, shouldn't be encountering people, but also it, it could just be they're very, very curious, so it could have just been very curious. Uh, Beverly says, do they put piping plover at risk? Great question and great uh, analysis, absolutely yes. So piping plovers are ground nesting birds that makes their nests uh, very susceptible to a weasel raiding the nest and they will chase uh, the young and try and catch uh, the adults on the nest. K 
came across old track in the sand on West Beach this morning. Can you send a video? Can I send a video for your interpretation? Absolutely. So you can contact us on our website, megspointnaturecenter.org. We have a, a, a um, contact us place. You can send videos, photos, uh, questions, comments. Uh, and if you've done an artwork or any sort of project like that, uh, we would be happy to uh, look at that as well and maybe put it up on the website. All right. Now, one of the things, one of the misconceptions, Timothy wants to know, how does the rabbit eat? So rabbits are eating uh, grass and pretty much just plants. They will eat flowers, so uh, grasses and things like that. Their teeth, uh, they have got short cutting teeth and then grinding teeth for grinding up plant matter. So rabbits are primarily just going to be eating plants. Um, the mink, when it's hunting for a rabbit, because the rabbit is substantially larger than the mink, they go for the throat. Mink go for the throat, or mink and weasels will go for the throats of their prey. And because they're a predator, they're very quick. Once they get a hold of that throat, the other animal uh, probably not going to be able to escape or survive. So it's pretty impressive. I keep on checking uh, the whole time that uh, you guys were looking at the logs. I was checking the logs further to the sides and I'm not seeing anything, but uh, it's worth a try to come out here. That was just such a cool experience yesterday. Uh, a chucker made a surprise visit, but lots of feathers found the rest of the day. Would a weasel attack a chucker? So a chucker is a type of a quail, and absolutely, quail are ground, on the ground most of the time. They can fly, but they spend a lot of time on the ground, uh, which makes them very vulnerable to uh, weasels and people that raise chuckers and other um, fowl like chickens, they've got to really watch out for the, um, the weasels. So weasels will get into your chicken pen, even pheasants. Uh, pheasants are large. Turkeys, uh, a weasel would go for a turkey as well. So uh, those weasels, they're, at, they're attacking things much larger than them. Again, if they go for the throat. Um, actually, there's a good thing. So they do go for the throat, and people years ago thought that they were drinking blood or vampiric. They would bite and suck the blood out uh, like a vampire. They do not do that. They will drink the blood. They will lick the blood off of feathers, and you know they, they go for the throat because that's a vulnerable place. So they'll, they'll go and they'll try and rip out the throat of their prey, and they will lick the, the blood as well. Uh, but they're not sucking blood out of their prey like, a, like you think of a, with a vampire. It's kind of a cool story, though, isn't it? Yeah, people thought they were little vampiric uh, animals years ago. All right, do we have any other questions? I'm not seeing any questions right now. I feel like we've covered the weasel pretty well. I'm going to let everybody know that these programs happen Tuesday through Friday at 11 o'clock. And this coming Saturday at 10 o'clock, very, very special program. We're going to be doing an atlatl program with a world-renowned expert on atlatls. He's a former world champion in atlatl throwing, Gary Nolf. I am very excited to bring him on. I've known Gary for years. We've done programs uh, together with hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of people over the years. He will blow your mind with how much he knows about atlatls, and we will throw atlatls live on camera. Uh, we'll throw a distance one through for you. We'll throw for accuracy. Obviously, he's a world champion, so he's much better than I am, and he's better at teaching about atlatls than I am too. So, It'll be fun. As soon as we are able to have the public back at programs, we're going to be doing atlatl programs. Uh, we're going to have, um, 
I think what we're planning on is a, a celebration for next year because this was the 100th anniversary of Hammonasset Beach State Park. Next year, we're going to celebrate 101 as if it's our 100th anniversary because uh, we really missed out. There were a lot of things planned for this year that we weren't able to pull off because of uh, uh, the virus. And I'm not upset about that. We needed to take precautions and we still need to. You should still be wearing a mask when you go out in public. If you can't maintain social distance, you should be wearing a mask. Um, and at Hammond Asset, We've got the bike trail, it's very popular, but if you're walking that trail, you should be wearing a mask because you can't keep social distance from people walking or running past you. All right, there's a couple of questions and or comments. What do people use the pelts for? Nowadays, I'm not sure. Years ago, they made coats out of them. And I used to have the number, how many weasels it took to make a fur coat and a full length fur coat, I want to say it was something in the neighborhood of 90 to 120 uh, weasels for one coat. It's really a high number. I have a good friend in Ontario who has a bunny rescue. She has problems with weasels, absolutely. Uh, the weasels would love to get in a captive bunny in a pen is a pretty easy target for a weasel. Nancy says, I heard that they are indiscriminate and kill for pleasure more than just one victim. I've also heard they drink blood too. So yes, and that is a misconception. Again, I'll go back to, so people think that all the members of the weasel families, if you think of Fisher, that they just kill indiscriminately. Uh, wolverines, probably most of the world-renowned uh, killer of animals is the wolverine. They do not kill indiscriminately. They are killing for food. Again, very high metabolism. They need to eat a lot, and they may not be able to get enough food the next day. So they will kill. They will stash their prey. Many of them will bury their prey. Some of them actually will defecate or go to the bathroom on their prey and then they'll come back and dig it up and eat it and they think oh they're going to the bathroom so that other animals won't eat it uh, or that they're just ruining it for other animals and that they're not going to eat it no they will come back and eat it so they are not indiscriminate killers they kill if they have an opportunity to kill an entire pen of chickens they'll kill three or four in in a night but they plan on coming back and eating them. So they're not killing just for the pleasure of it. So there's a misconception. We'll hopefully we'll uh, make that go away a little bit more today with this program. All right, I love doing these programs. I hope everyone's enjoying the programs. I really appreciate the questions and comments. You guys had some great questions today. Uh, from Timmy, Nancy, everybody had some really good questions, so I really appreciate that. And I hope that you tune in again and ask more questions next time. So until tomorrow, this is Ranger Russ from the Megs Point Nature Center coming to you today from Charlie's Island here at Hammonasset Beach State Park. Beautiful day. Come and visit the beach, and I will see you all tomorrow.